This is the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. I've been using it pretty much every day since it launched in March, so that's about three months. And this is my three month review, or three and a half. One of the top things I love about this phone is still the design. It's just beautiful when you hold it in your hand. It's got a really large screen, but I just love the elegant curves on the side. And I absolutely love, love, love this purple color on the back. Yes, it does attract fingerprints and it gets all smeary and that's gross, but I can mostly ignore it. I get complimented on it all the time. I notice that people will stop and look at it even if they don't mention anything to me. I was at a cafe and I had it face down on the table and I noticed out of the corner of my eye another patron at the cafe who was kind of trying to like slyly hold up their phone, you know, in a way where you're pretending that you're looking at what's on the screen but you're really taking a picture. They weren't taking a picture of me, they were taking a picture of the phone. Uh, so it's definitely an eye catcher. Unfortunately, uh, it will break because it's glass and I don't trust myself to hold on to it. I know that if it's in my hand sooner or later it's gonna fall and crack. So I scoured the internet and this is the best case that I could find. It's a Spigen case, it's purple, and I thought that would kind of like honor the purple color. I've tried using clear cases but they kind of dull the effect. Uh, you know, when you hold it in the light at different angles, you really get this great depth of color. And I don't have it with this case, so that's unfortunate, but it was the best I could do. Split screen is one of those features that a lot of Samsung phones have, and I always liked it, and I would always use it for testing, but I never naturally used it until I started using this phone every single day. And now there are so many times during the week where I will open up split screens. I have the calendar or a map or an email open in one screen, and I might have, you know, any one of those other apps open in the other screen. It's really great if I'm trying to, you know, look at a schedule or a timetable and find out what time a train's getting in or something like that and then uh, send the information along in a message without going back and forth between multiple screens. So that is definitely a feature that I didn't know I was going to use and like as much as I do. I also really like using the edge display. This is sort of a bar on the side of your phone. You can put the tab anywhere you want and you can fill it with shortcuts for apps, for people. It's very easy to get out of control and add way too much information, which just winds up taking time because the point is that from any screen that you're on on this phone, you can open this up and get to a person or an app that you use. There are about a million different ways that you can customize a Samsung phone, and while it can be incredibly overwhelming when you're picking through every setting submenu, it's actually something that I really appreciate. I know it's there, and I spent a lot of time actually uh, choosing the custom color of the clock widget on my always-on display and on my lock screen, and that's something that really is just for me, but when the phone is laying on the table, I look over and I know that it's mine. It's just like a little identifying characteristic. Like, yeah, that's my phone. I made it that color. <laughs> The last thing that I absolutely have to mention has to do with unlocking. So this phone will let you unlock with your iris or with your fingerprint. And one thing that I love about this that the iPhone 10 just doesn't have is that if for some reason you're trying to unlock using your face, your iris in this case, and the read doesn't go through the first time, the phone will offer you an option to press a little button and redo it. And the iPhone 10 just doesn't give you that option. I also like that there's this combination of iris scanning with fingerprint unlock, because between the two of them, I'm gonna get the phone unlocked pretty quickly with the least amount of frustration possible. Even though I love how this phone looks, I do have one little complaint with the way that the phone curves. Sometimes when I'm in a note or an email or writing a text message and I wanna put my cursor at the beginning of the sentence, for some reason the touch just doesn't register. It's like my finger just falls off the side of the waterfall. All right, can we talk about the Bixby button for a second? It's here on the side and I never use it on purpose, but I launch it all the time because I carry my phone either in my back pocket or in my purse. And when I'm reaching into my purse and I'm grabbing the phone by the top, that is the perfect place for me to accidentally open up Bixby. It's just, it just hits the bottom of my thumb right there. So I wind up giving it a squeeze and instead of seeing my home screen or the lock screen, which is what I expect, I always see this. And I don't know how it's possible that I'm still at level two for all the times that I open Bixby. It's gotta happen minimum once a day. 
The camera on this is really good. It's got this dual aperture lens. The Galaxy S9 has that too. And then it's got the portrait lens. And although I really love that this phone gives me the option to take portrait photos, I find that I don't really use it a lot. And then when I do use it, I don't know, it just sort of blows up the subject more than I wanted to. So, you know, I look through the viewfinder and I see this nice scene and I just want to blur the edges exactly as it is and I put on portrait mode and all of a sudden like their face is this like giant moon in my viewfinder. Um, I know that's how it is with portrait mode, but I, I don't know. I love that you can blur the edges, that there's a sliding scale on the Galaxy S phones, um, but it's just not something that I use as much as I thought, and that's really one of the main purposes to have the plus version, that and the larger screen size. The last thing that I should leave you with is a comment on the apps. The Samsung native apps just aren't very good. I've replaced every single one of them, nearly every single one of them, from uh, the browser to my messaging app with apps from Google instead or some other kind of third-party app. And I just wind up using those a lot more. So while the phone is really beautiful and while I like a lot of the customizations that Samsung has put on top of Android, I think that they should just stick to those and move away from apps entirely. I mean, even the keyboard, it's just, it's awful. I had to replace it. I could not survive another day <laughs> using the native keyboard. So I've learned a lot about this phone from the time that I first reviewed it until now. And I've got to say, I would still recommend it. It's still a really beautiful device, perfect for day-to-day -day needs. There are just those little quirks and caveats that aren't exclusive to this phone. Really, they apply to any device that you buy. Um, so there you have it. That's been my three-month review. If you like what you see, subscribe to CNET, and I'll be back with more.